Good afternoon. This is Robert Scribbler after a long hiatus. Thank you for joining me today. I have been absent for a while and a lot of people, a lot of you guys might want to know, well, where have you been? And I will just say for now that I have been very busy. I'm going to talk about more about that later. Now, for this particular video, I am going to discuss a, a transition that I'm making as a blogger and a climate and clean energy informer. I'm going to talk about a new project that I am engaged in called Extreme Clean. But before I get into that, I'd just like to go through some of the more recent climate news. And I'd like to note that this climate news that we are experiencing right now is of a similar vein that we have tended to experience at least over the last uh, seven or eight years or so, and, and probably since the, the mid to, to late 2000s. Uh, and since that period, we've seen an escalation of extreme weather events related to climate change. So the news that we are seeing over recent weeks is, is rather similar to the news that we have seen over recent years. And, and that news is that we have seen a very extreme storm events related to human-caused climate change. One, a, a cyclone striking Mozambique, causing devastation of a city of 500,000 people in the area of Guerra. And I hope I'm not mangling that name which essentially uh, devastated the city of half a million people, resulting in more than 400,000 refugees. And, and many are now saying that this tropical cyclone is one of the worst, if not the worst weather related catastrophes in the history of the region and potentially in the history of Africa itself. Um, many are saying that the destruction in Biera will go down in history as being the first city completely devastated by climate change. Uh, my, my personal opinion is that we've already had a number of cities that have been completely devastated by climate change. Uh, cities in the U.S. West that have been devastated or destroyed by wildfires as, as well as the large wildfire that occurred in Fort McMurray in Canada. But what we are seeing is, is a multiple a multiplication of, of city and region threatening extreme weather events to include hurricanes, floods, droughts, major water shortages related to climate change, wildfires, heat waves, and other extreme event, events. And these extreme events are happening in the context of global warming in the range of 1.1 degrees Celsius, which is expected to, over coming decades, potentially exceed more and more dangerous thresholds. And, and as a result, we as people and as individuals are, are called to act and, and to do the best that we can to try and blunt the force of the disasters that are now rising in frequency and, and becoming more prevalent. I'm going to talk more about action, about, about my particular action going forward. But before I do, I'd also like to note another major climate and, and weather related disaster has been linked by climate scientists to climate change. And these are the recent historic floods that have occurred in the US Midwest. And I just like to note that one of, one of the many impacts related to this severe event is that uh, Offutt Air Base has been flooded. And you can see that in the satellite pictures here. Uh, Offutt Air, Air Base is in Nebraska, and this has caused severe damage to our national uh, security related infrastructure. But in, in addition, Nebraska itself is facing more than $1 billion in damages from these extreme and historic floods that are now ongoing as a result of what is called a, a bomb type cyclone, which, which impacted the US Midwest over the past week. Now, this bomb type cyclone produced effects similar to a category two hurricane with 100 mile per hour winds 
and very severe rainfalls. And according to Dr. Tre Trevin, I'm sorry, Kevin Trenberth from the National Center for Atmospheric Research, um, there, there was both record amounts of snow that fell um, over parts of the Great Plains. And the winter as a whole in this region was the uh, wettest on record. And, and that the extreme rainfall associated with this most recent storm is what we would tend to expect with human-caused climate change. One of the reasons being that as the atmosphere warms up, it can hold more water vapor in suspension. And overall, this, this amplifies the, the hydrologic, the warming amplifies the hydrological cycle in which more evaporation is coming up from the surface of the earth. And the tendency is for rainfall and precipita pre precipitation events to become more extreme as global temperatures warm. And, and we're, we're tending to see that in storms and, and rainfall events. Now, the most recent impacts being the, for the US at least, the, the extreme flooding that we have seen. Now, it's worth noting that climate change tends to amplify extreme weather. It doesn't mean that in a normal climate you wouldn't have extreme weather events, but under human-caused climate changes, it increases the peak potential intensity of a number of severe events, including extreme droughts, extreme rainfall, and, and in a number of cases, uh, extreme hurricanes. And I just, going back to the Mozambique disaster, I just like to look at sea surface temperature anomalies near Mozambique at the time in which the hurricane formed, which then subsequently struck Mozambique. And as you can see from this Earth Null School, Null School historical map, sea surface temperatures near Mozambique were in the range of about 1.1 to 2 degrees, 2.3 degrees Celsius above normal. So the storm that struck Mozambique and that caused such catastrophic damage for the Bura region and for the city of Bura and which displaced 400,000 people emerged from ocean waters that were much warmer than normal. And those warmer than normal waters provided fuel for that severe storm. Now this news that I am sharing with you right now it is news that could have happened a month ago, a year ago, two years ago. And it's the kind of news that we will tend to see in the months and years in the future with, with these, this, these storms and these climate change related events increasing in severity as time moves forward. So, so this particular set of news is, is a set of news that, that creates our present context. And, and generates a context of, of worsening extreme events related to climate change. So, so it's just worth noting that these events are just part of an over, overall larger picture. This story will be told and retold with increasing frequency. So, so shifting on to what, what I'm talking about today is, um, is our responsibility, or in, in my case, my responsibility, my trying to take responsibility for my own emissions, to reduce my emissions, and to help others do the same. And I'm calling this effort Extreme Clean. Now, as those of you who follow me may note, I went dark for a number of months, and I didn't just disappear and do nothing. What, what, I, what I've been doing is a number of things to try and put myself on a better footing where I can increase my clean energy potential and also help others do the same. So, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about my life and, and what I've been doing recently. So, so what I've been doing is I have been ride sharing uh, in the time that I would typically be blogging to save money for a clean energy vehicle and then share those clean rides with others. Now at present, my, my present automobile is a 2009 Hyundai Elantra. Now this, this particular automobile, as far as emissions go, is not, 
a, a terrible automobile. It's not like a you know like like a massive SUV or a big truck uh, that guzzles gas and, and produces you know extraordinarily high volume of greenhouse gas emissions. That said, this vehicle is you know does have a significant carbon footprint, and transitioning this vehicle to an all electric vehicle and plugging that electric vehicle into the cleaner Maryland grid, which is where I live would reduce my transportation-based carbon emissions by a factor of about two or three. So that, that would be a big deal for me, but, but the bigger deal is to be able to share that clean ride with others and to, to also share the experience of transitioning to clean energy with others in the hopes of inspiring others to, to act in a similar way. So, so what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be describing for you my journey with regards to clean energy. And that, that involves, one, transitioning to clean transportation as the first major goal. Now, in order to do that, I've been engaged in rideshare. I have, uh, let's see if I can pull, pull up this picture here of... Uh, some of my rideshare achievements. So, so I've uh, been engaging in rideshare and I have completed 1,139 trips since September. And what that has enabled me to do is, is save up uh, a decent chunk of change. And what I'm, what I'm going to do over the next few weeks, and this is really exciting for me, is I am going to use that money, money to purchase a, an electrical vehicle. It's going to be one of a number of highly capable electrical vehicles that are now becoming available to the public. And, and for me, from the standpoint of someone who is concerned about climate change, this is, this is a really big deal to be able to access this kind of clean energy electric, electric vehicle. Now, what I'm going to do is in the future, I'm going to go through my process of deciding which particular electrical electric vehicle I'm going to choose with you. And I am going to ask you to provide me feedback and let me know what you think is the best choice. But I, I haven't gotten into that yet. I'm not going to get into that yet. That will be for a future blog. Now, it's also worth noting that I need a very highly capable electric vehicle because number one, I intend to ride share with it, which means that I need to have a long range and, and, and a vehicle that, that's capable of, of traveling a, a long distance. On average, when I ride share, I travel between about 100 and, and 200 miles over the course of the period of time in which I ride share. So I need a vehicle that can handle that and have a little bit of cushion to get me back home or to a charging station where I can get more electricity. The other point is, and this is, a, a pretty extreme challenge. Uh, I live in a condo. I don't have access to a charging station in my garage or in my parking lot. So I need to be able to gain access to charging near where I live or, or to convince my condo association to install a charging station. And that's one of the challenges that I seek to overcome as I engage in this process. Now, I did mention that I was going to be choosing a highly capable electric vehicle, and, and there are a number of very highly capable electric vehicles that look like they might be able to meet my needs and, and be useful for me in this, this goal that I have of sharing clean energy and clean rides with other people and multiplying my clean energy impact to help confront the, the very severe problem of human-caused climate change. And here are just a, a few of the very capable long-range electric vehicles that are now available. I'd like to add that the Chevy Bolt is also a highly capable long-range electric vehicle, one that I'm going to be looking at as, as a potential purchase by mid-April, and I'm looking at delivery of a clean energy vehicle by sometime in May or June, depending on which one I do decide to choose. So just to sum up, climate change impacts continue. 
myself personally, I've decided that this is an all hands on deck moment for me, and I'm going to do what I can to send a signal to the market and the political system and the economic system, as well as to my social group and my friends and family that, that now is the time to, to really act, that we really need to act to help each other and to help our world, the human world, which is also a technological world, to transition to clean energy. And this is, this is the first step for me in doing my part. I'm going to share this journey with you. It's gonna, it's gonna happen in multiple phases. And I'm going to talk to you about my successes, my failures, my struggles, and I hope that you can take what I have learned and apply it to your life if, if you are also concerned about climate change and want to do something. Now, I'm going to ask for your support. I'm going to ask for you to share this video with your friends and family members or anyone that you think might be interested in trying a, a, an extreme clean process to, to clean up your life and reduce your carbon emissions and eventually get to net zero individual carbon emissions. So this is this is really exciting for me. It's going to it's going to be a big challenge. It's it's also a little scary, but but now is is the, is the time to act in, in my opinion. So if you want to support me, please share this video. If you want to do what I'm doing and engage in clean rides, I'd like to ask for you to just also consider taking uh, my Uber referral number uh, or my Uber referral ID, which is uh, Robert F3028UE. I'm going to go ahead and add that to the end of this blog in the notes. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.